Welcome to Sacred Stories Podcast, a place to explore and discuss new and exciting books of consciousness. I am your host, Reverend Patricia Caginello, and speaking with authors that have shared their wisdom and stories through their books is one of my favorite things to do. Today, we are speaking with Mel Greenberg, a contributing author to our new book of inspiring stories, Chaos to Clarity, Sacred Stories of Transformational Change. Mel's story is titled Two Words, and we're going to talk about what those two words are. Mel is a mom, wife, writer, and survivor. Mel is also the author of her book, Running With Our Eyes Closed, and the founder of Mel Media. So welcome, Mel Greenberg, to Sacred Stories. Hi, Patricia. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. So Mel, tell us what the two words are. The two words are speculated margins. And speculated margins was a very significant change event in your life. Can you tell our audience your story, please? It was. I was 49 years old, and those were uttered to me by my um, doctor during an annual mammogram, and they found something, and I hadn't heard those terms before, but I was quite familiar with breast cancer, and I, the look on her face, the, the air in her energy, I knew this was not, those were not good words I wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. So in addition to the breast cancer diagnosis, which of course is, is a major fear for many women and a major diagnosis, why was this especially um, important to you? It was, I, my mother died of breast cancer when I was 17. And so I had spent a great portion of my life fearing that I would get it. And the anxiety that grew within me and the, and the, the, the choices I made in my life and the fear that I lived with every day and, and eventually just kept tapping down and, and burying within me came to the surface then. And so it was a revelation. And, and, and honestly, it was an open door to freedom because the one thing in my life that I had feared the most had happened and it almost was an empowering moment for me because I was now in control. I wasn't fearing it anymore. I did have it. I dealt with it. I worked through it and I'm here quite honestly, 10 years later, completely cancer free, stronger, newer, freer than I had ever been. So it was truly a silver lining moment for me. Your, your story is very powerful and, and there's a quite a few takeaways, you know, that I think people will, will have when they read it. One of the ones that was especially powerful for me was, was when you said that somewhere between your mother dying and you receiving your diagnosis, you grew up. Can you sh- share more about that? Well, I guess, I mean, you know, you find yourself, we just put one foot in front of the other as we go through our lives. And those steps take us in one direction or another. And mine was always overshadowed a bit by that fear. And the fear grew. And through my 20s, it grew really strong. And and it was, um, it impeded me in a lot of ways. And I wasn't used to that. I was not a fearful individual growing up. I was very confident. And I wasn't. And I, it was creating terrible anxiety in me. And I got married, had children, had a life, raised them, implored confidence into them. And all the time dealing with this under the surface. So it's almost like you're living a parallel life. You know, outwardly, you're great. Everything's awesome. You're this person in the community to your family, to anyone who knows you. And, but to yourself, to your authentic true self, when it's just you, it's a very different existence. And it was finally coming to terms and those two existences merging and becoming one. And I felt like that was almost that diagnosis was almost the opening door for me to just grow up and be me completely. And there was no more um, disparity in my existence. Is that what compelled you to share this particular story for our book? It is because I think, um, well, when I was presented with the, the opportunity to do this, I really had to think about what changed in my life. And, and that was something that I could look back on. And it was, it was a, an aha moment for me and it was a positive moment. And I still, I feel this to this day, a decade later that it was a blessing. And my life began 
with that diagnosis in quite a different way. And it offered me an opportunity to open up and to be real and to, to move on in my life. And honestly, I don't think that if I had not gotten cancer, I probably would have continued on. I would have been fine. I've had a great life and I've had a great life until then. But now it's so much richer and it's, it's just, it's more real. I can taste it and feel it in a different way than I ever could before. So I think that the idea to be able to share that, that sometimes the things that we fear the most can actually, if we face them, really do set us free. You do say in your book, surviving your worst nightmare liberated you. It did. That's a, yes, that's, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> um, it. It was liberating. And, and, and again, as I, as I sit here now speaking with you and I think about even the last five years, what's transpired in my life and all that is just a continuation of going through that process. So again, the one thing that I feared the most happened I dealt with it. It was no longer something to fear. It was real. It was in front of me. There was no turning back. Once that diagnosis, you know, it's like within a second, there was my life before. And then at forevermore, I will be a cancer survivor. And I don't tend to look at myself in that vein in terms of being a survivor, because to me, what other choice is there? We go forward, we do what we have to do to move on and go on and, and become stronger and hopefully better through the process. And that's where I find myself today. So it it absolutely was a liberating moment. For the women that are currently fearful of it because of similar circumstances or are dealing with breast cancer or another form of cancer, what would you say to them? What, you know, what kind of support would you share with them based on your journey? Oh my gosh, to be, well, first of all, God bless you for what you're going through. It's scary. It was, it was frightening. And to know that you're not alone, and especially in this time, I think that the conversation has come so much to the forefront and so much is being done both medically and culturally to support breast cancer patients and breast cancer survivors, that you truly are not alone. Regardless of your personal circumstance, you are not alone. And, and that was profound for me because my mother was diagnosed early in the 70s, and it was a very different time, and she really was alone. And, and I'm so grateful that, that our community and our, our medical communities and our social communities are so supportive, and there are so many outlets that no matter your circumstance, you do not have to face this alone. And, and my gosh, if you ever want to talk, reach out to me privately on my social media or through my website. Um, it, it, you're not alone. That's the biggest thing that I would impart to you. And, that, and having that sense, knowing that regardless of, your, of the term of your diagnosis or the type of diagnosis, that you don't have to travel this journey alone is empowering in itself. Was it, I know it feels liberating and I know that that's why you com- were compelled to share your story. Was it challenging though to go back through it, to write, to relive in any way this part of your life? Oh my gosh. It took me, I know I got it to you on deadline, but it was, it was like a, an 11th hour thing for me because it was so hard to sit down and I had so many emotions come up when I sat down to write it because I had, you know, I wanted to think about what I wanted to say and how I wanted to share this with the public and, and how I could best do that. And, and through that, it it was, it was really painful. And my, I, my kids read it first and it made them sad. I mean, it's sad, but it's happy. So it was really, it was challenging emotionally. And however, now I'm so glad I did. And, and it's so much easier to talk about now with, with, strangers with anybody. And I think that helps too. I think that's a really cathartic process. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting because I have a couple of my personal stories in the book as well. And reliving, you know, you know, it was, it was, it was hard. I have to say, that's why I asked you that question because I was like, I don't know that I want to revisit these feelings, but I, but I was able to come at them, you know, with it from a, in a different place with an expanded awareness of them. And even though the emotion was still there, it, you know, it was, a, it was an interesting emotion to, to revisit and to reflect on. Oh, I 
totally understand and agree. And it's kind of like that thing, you know, you write the letter to your 17 year old self, if I knew then what I know now, and, and going back and, and, and kind of peeling the bandaid off those wounds and that pain, I, I, I was able to also view it so differently. And I was able to be a little bit easier on my younger self. It's like, you know, it's okay that, that you were afraid then. And even though things turned out the way they did, you know, don't, because I used to kind of beat myself up about that. It's like, why did you fear that? Why did you have anxiety? Why were you this? Why were you that? And, and really now looking back, you know, it's, it's, it's all okay. We, we all get where we need to get. And you also shared that you have a, a deeper understanding of your mother and what your mother went through and, and how your mother maybe was private about some of, some of the illness and, and her diagnosis as well. Oh, most definitely. She, uh, she was a single mother. So while she kept pretty much the severity of it all from me, I, I can appreciate more now. I was, I was extremely critical. I think most especially in my early 20s, um, prior to having children, um, as to why that would be, why wouldn't you share? Why wouldn't you do this? And, you know, it's easy to not, when you're not in someone else's shoes. And, and I dealt with it differently, but my set of circumstances were different too. And um, my kids were not older, actually. They were about the same age. Um, a little, uh, well, two of them. So one was the same age and one was older. But then when I first found out about her diagnosis, and so I could appreciate and respect her choices. And that actually has translated, again, over this past decade into how I respond to people around me. It's, you know, it's just, judging is so easy and it's just so not okay because we are all fighting battles and we are all just trying to get through it as positively and, and in the best way we can. So I think that that gave me the opportunity to really appreciate what she probably struggled with. And again, I won't, I will never know because I can't ask her, but I can, I can surmise that why she made the choices she did. And I certainly appreciate them more and I'm, and, and I'm less judgmental. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Less judgmental. Absolutely. Well, they, you know, they say that the, that the judgment of, of ourselves is usually the most severe anyway. So to be able to be less judgmental of your mother and her decisions and of your response to them, you know, in the years following, I think is very liberating as well. Yes. Thank you. I, that's, yes, I agree. <laughs> so Mel, um, You've also written a book, Running With Our Eyes Closed, and you are the founder of Mel Media, so you have a lot going on. Can, can you share your, your website and how people can find out more about you and your work? Yes, my website is melmediallc.com, and I am on Facebook, Mel Media LLC, and I'm also on Instagram, and my handle there is Mel G. Burke. You can find me on LinkedIn under the same, my name, Mel Greenberg. And I love to, I, I'm responsive. I get back to people. I love the community that um, is out there and talking to people and, and working with people. And, um, and again, just support knowing that we're, none of us are alone on our journey. Absolutely. Thank you, Mel Greenberg, for being our guest, for being part of our book, sharing your story in, in Chaos to Clarity. It's, it's really a powerful story, and I know that, that everyone reading it will, will be able to take a little bit away, you know, that reflects in their own life and, and will be helpful to them as well. Thank you, Patricia, and thank you. I'm so grateful to have been able to be a part of this and have been asked and and to tell that story, I, I, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So Mel's story is called Two Words, and it can be found in our new book, Chaos to Clarity, Sacred Stories of Transformational Change, which is available through Amazon and booksellers worldwide or direct through Sacred Stories Publishing. So thank you to everyone for listening today. I am your host, Reverend Patricia Caginello. And until next time, as always, I encourage you to write your sacred story. Yeah.